Did you know that with modern technology, it takes one full day to install just three telegraph poles? Depending on terrain and conditions, of course, sometimes without heavy machinery is just impossible to do. And yet, in 1861, starting July 4th, 250 poles were averagely installed per day, non-stop, for the next three and a half months, and finished on October 24th, same year, 1861. In total of 27,500 telegraph poles holding 2,000 miles of wire are not only erected, but wires installed and connected, ready to use immediately in just 110 days. I do electrical works myself every day, and for me, it sounds like an impossibly short time frame to accomplish such a huge project. So let's take a look closer. Even though there were two teams working, the Western crew and the Eastern crew, assuming the technology level of 1861 and concurrent civil war broken up just a few months prior between the Union and Confederates, the telegraph line is supposed to be laid along the unforgiving terrain through mountains, lakes, forests and definitely a spot or two of indigenous people camps, which might have not be a friendly meetup anyway, shoving them poles into the ground and just quickly make a selfie while on it. It becomes really compelling of how exceptionally fast it was done and completed, cutting down almost 30,000 trees and preparing them by treating creosote. For example, nowadays in the United States, wooden poles are treated with pentachlorophenol or PSP, also known as penta. But back in 19th century, they used creosote. Now, the typical utility pole runs about 40 feet in length, in which about 6 feet is buried in the ground, and about 200 feet apart from each other, greatly depending on local terrain, of course. Imagine transporting them, installing each and every one of them, and not to forget, each tree pole weighs about 1500 pounds, fresh cut trees, also throwing wire on them and digging holes for the next poles to come. How in the world was possible to accomplish all this work within 110 days? David Hockfelder, in his book The Telegraph in America, literally describes the matter in one sentence. Large gangs of men were organized to commence the work in different points. Nearly 1,000 oxen were found necessary for the transportation of camps, food, wire and poles for the different parties, who on the 4th of July 1861 broke ground in the construction of the telegraph to the Pacific. How much water and food do 1,000 oxen need in the middle of the summer, July? Working full time, what about people? My verdict to this little story is, it's plausible and maybe even conceivable that poles were already there. And large gangs of men were assigned to only install wires on them. With such a great infrastructure and building remains found here previously, where Indians actually sometimes even dwelt for decades, it is very possible to find ancient poles to be already standing, which might have been used for something else, while our developing civilization decided to appropriate and repurpose them for telegraphic needs. It is interesting to know that those first poles a few years later were demolished and under the excuse to relocate the line closer to the new railroad were taken down. Just like all the magnificent work of art, world fair buildings as well, sculptures, architecture were conveniently dismantled in no time. Sounds to me like someone is covering tracks and concealing something. But what do I know? I'm only a nerd with his laptop handy. <laughs>